question that arises is that if a person looks at the story of Sayyid al-Shuhada, Salamullahi alayhi, without seeing Imam Hussein as Imam Ma'soom, without seeing Sayyid al-Shuhada as an infallible and as someone who has the purest of hearts, if someone looks at this story without knowing who Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam is, what do they assume? They assume that in this world, Many types of conflicts have taken place. Many types of conflicts in this world have taken place. One person looking for power, the other one looking for power. Struggles of power, struggles to be known, struggles of status and position. And so when a person looks at the story of Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam, one of the questions that arises, how do I know? And how can someone that doesn't already believe in the character of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, how can they understand and it, can it be proven to them that when Sayyid al-Shuhada stands in front of Yazid ibn Muawiyah and when he leaves Medina al Munawwara, he doesn't do so for Hubbul Jah wa Shuhra, he does for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this was one of the questions that the ulama discussed. How do we know? How can we tell that Hussein salamullah alayhi doesn't stand for status to be known, to gain the khilafah of this earth. How do we know this? In answering this question, ulama gave a number of answers. Because today, if you look in the history of Europe, of the Middle East, of the Arabs, of the non-Arabs, you will find so many examples. One person rises up, he wants power, he's killed by his own brother, he's killed by his own father, the father kills the son, the son kills the father. We see this in all types of history. So how do I know this wasn't the case in Karbala? How do I know it wasn't just a story of a person who wanted power, goes to fight Yazid and Yazid kills him? How do I know this wasn't the case? The ulama in trying to answer this, give a number of answers. Some of them you've heard before. Of the answers that are mentioned is for example, who says that asking or desiring position is always a bad thing? Yes, we said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests someone whose actions are there for jah, wa shuhra, position, status, power. But who said that is all the time? Who said that is the case alal itlaq in every single situation? No. Rather, in certain cases, doing something with the love of position in your heart is a good thing. Let me give you an example. You have, for example, a town. This town has 20, 30 families. There's only one person in that town that has the potential to go and study in university and become a doctor. And he would be the only doctor of this town. In that case, when there's only one person amongst these 30 families who has the potential to study and come back and be a doctor, it becomes wajib on him to do so. This person has love of what? Love of reaching a position. Love of becoming a medic. But why does he do so? His love for position, his love for status wasn't so that he could be arrogant in front of people. His love for status was to serve the human being. Likewise, if you have a group of families and there's not one mujtahid or alim, it becomes necessary and wajib for one person to go and study who's got that salahiyya, who's got that potential, with the love in his heart to reach the status of a mujtahid. Why? So that he can serve the people. Or an even simpler example, if you have a gathering. And in this gathering, one person, let's say, is hard of hearing. And so we need someone who can do sign language. There's only one person in all of that gathering. This person stands up. He says, I'll be the translator. So he has a desire to reach a status in front of people, but not for himself, not for his own ego, to serve the people that are in front of him. This type of love of position and status is something that is praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something we find in Quran al Kareem, where Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam says, Ij'alni ala khaza'in al ard. Nabi Yusuf, in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, what does he say? He tells the, the Pharaoh of Egypt, makes me, make me the chancellor in charge of the finances. Why? Because he knows that no one can deal with the finances and stop people from dying like me. And so the first thing that we said is when we say hubbu shuhra wal jah and position is a bad thing, it's not always seen to be a bad thing. 
For if you have Imam al Ma'soom, who knows that he is able to lead the community better than anyone else or lead the Ummah better than anyone else, it becomes wajib for him to have desire to reach that status in front of people. The second thing that we were told that proves that Hussein Salamullah Ali doesn't have love of status and power is that there are a number of conversations that take place with Sayyid, between Sayyid al-Shuhada and some of his close family members before he leaves uh, Medina al Munawwara. We have a number of situations and things that take place where the Holy Imam speaks to, for example, Muhammad Hanafiya, Ibn Abbas and others. And if a person wishes to understand the goal of Sayyid al-Shuhada in Karbala better, then he should read those conversations. Person can understand exactly why did he uh, leave Medina and rise up. In one of them is his speech with Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas comes to him and says, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, I love you as a brother. And I'm someone that wishes to advise you sincerely. I'm not someone that wishes bad for you. So the Imam says, yes, I know. What you say is true, that you love me as a brother. He says, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, why do you go to, uh, towards Iraq? Why do you go towards Kufa? I fear that you would be killed. Go somewhere else. He says, why don't you go to Yemen where there are more followers of your father, Ali ibn Abi Talib, than in Iraq? There you will have stronger followers, a greater number of followers, more sincere followers. The Imam, Salamullah Ali, replies by saying, yes, your advice is good. However, I stick on my plan and I go to Kufa. This is one of the proofs of the reason why Hussein Salamullah Alayhi leaves. What do I mean? For if, a, some, if someone has love for power and love for status, would he go to that place where he has more followers or that place where he has less followers? If I have love to conquer and have love for gaining a status and position, would I go somewhere where I have 5,000 sincere followers or somewhere where I can get 10,000? Ibn Abbas says you have more sincere followers in Yemen. Go there. Gather your followers there. Hussein says no. If he has will, uh, a desire for power, he goes to Yemen first. He gathers the Shia of Amir al-Mu'mineen that were there. Then he comes. But he doesn't do so. Music